20 minutes of this video and 7 minutes of nothing. Okay. I'm your host, Crafty Indy. We're going to be doing some art. It's <clears throat> the latest thing to put together. In. Element configuration. I'm just glazing it up to make the paint sparkle a little more. But it's pretty much done. I'm gonna move on to something a little more spicy and original. As soon as I wash my brushes off here. say about this whole thing anything short of an executive order if I'm codifying Roe v. Wade and making it federal law that it's uh, legal to get an abortion is a failure that's all it is Why doesn't it come out of my left speaker? Fifty years ago. Where's your stereo Roe setup? Wade was decided. It has been the law of the land since then. This landmark case protected women's right to choose, a right to make intensely personal decisions over oh, a doctor, oh God. free from the interference of the I know what it does. It reaffirmed basic principles of equality. The women have the power to control their own destiny. And it reinforced a fundamental right of privacy right of each of us to choose how to live our lives. Now, with Roe gone, let's be very clear. The health and life of women in this nation are now at risk. As chairman and ranking member of the Senate Judiciary Committee, as vice president and now as president of the United States, I've studied this case carefully. I've overseen more Supreme Court confirmation. You said you were going to codify it when you got in office. In this case was always discussed. I believe Roe v. Wade was the correct decision. Hey, Heather. As a matter of constitutional law and application of the fundamental right to privacy and liberty in matters of family and personal autonomy. It was a decision on a complex matter. It drew a careful balance between a woman's right to choose earlier in her pregnancy and the state's ability to regulate later in her pregnancy. A decision with broad national consensus that most Americans of faith and backgrounds found acceptable that have been the law of the land for most of the lifetime of Americans today. And it was a constitutional principle upheld by justices appointed by Democrat and Republican presidents alike. Roe v. Wade was a 7-2 decision written by a justice appointed by a Republican president, Richard Nixon. In the five decades that followed Roe v. Wade, justices appointed by Republican presidents from Eisenhower, Nixon, and Reagan, George W. Bush, were among the, wow, the women wow. and girls who were forced to bear their rapist child. The child of consequence. I can't take it. It just, it, it just stuns me. It's so extreme that doctors will be criminalized for fulfilling their duty. And what are you going to do about it? Imagine having... What are you doing? Imagine having to carry the child of incest, as a consequence of incest. No option. Too often the case, poor women are going to be hit the hardest. It's cruel. In fact, the court laid out state laws criminalizing abortion that go back to the 1800s. The rationale. The court literally taking America back 150 years. It's a sad day for the country. But 
doesn't mean the fight's over. Let me be very clear and unambiguous. The only way we can secure a woman's right to choose, balance of existence, is for Congress to restore the protections of Roe v. Wade as federal law. Well, why, why hasn't that ha already happened? This fall, we must elect more senators and representatives who will codify women's right to choose in the federal law once again. Okay, let that drive for a bit. Elect more state leaders to protect this right at the local level. We need to restore the protections of Roe as law of the land. We need to elect officials who will do that. This is all about just fall, funding the DNC Roe campaign. Personal freedoms are on the ballot. The right to privacy. Liberty, equality, they're all on the ballot. Until then, I will do all of my power to protect a woman's right in states where they will face the consequences of today's decision. While well, the court's decision cast a dark shadow over a large swath of the land, many states in this country still recognize a woman's right to choose. So, if a woman lives in a state that restricts abortion, the Supreme Court's decision does not prevent her from traveling from her home state to the state that allows it. it does not prevent a doctor in that state, in that state, from treating her. As the Attorney General has made clear, women must re remain free to travel safely to another state to seek the care they need. My administration will defend that bedrock right. Yeah, they shouldn't have to Any travel state states. Or local official, high or low tries to interfere with a woman's ex exercise and her basic right to travel, I will do everything in my power to fight that deeply un-American attack. My administration will also protect a woman's access to medications that are approved by the Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, like contraception, which is essential for preventative health care. How? You need to protect this one. Mifeprestone, which the FDA approved 20 years ago to safely end early pregnancies and is commonly used to treat miscarriages. Some states are saying that they'll try to ban or severely restrict access to these medications. But extremist governors and state legislators are looking to block the mail or search the person's medicine cabinet or control a woman's actions by tracking data on her apps she uses are wrong and extreme and out of touch majority of Americans. The American Medical Association, the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, wrote to me and Vice President Harris stressing that these laws are not based on, are not based on evidence and asking us to act to protect access to care. They say by limiting access to these medicines, maternal mortality will climb in America. That's what they say. Today, I'm directing the Department of Health and Human Services to take steps to ensure these critical medications are available to the fullest extent possible. And the politicians cannot interfere in the decisions that should be made between a woman and her doctor. My administration will remain vigilant as the implications of this decision play out. I've warned about how this decision risks broader right to privacy for everyone. That's because Roe recognized the fundamental right to privacy that has served as a basis for so many more rights that have come to take... You just said that like seven times. ...that are ingrained in the fabric of this country. The right to make the best decisions for your health. The right to use birth control, marry a couple in the privacy of their bedroom. The right to marry the person you love. Justice Thomas said as much today. He explicitly called to reconsider the right of marriage equality, the right of couples to make their choices on contraception. This extreme and dangerous path the court is now taking us on. Let me close with two points. You're the fucking president. First, what are you going to do about it? I call on everyone, no matter how deeply they care about this decision, 
to keep all protests peaceful. Peaceful, peaceful. Oh peaceful. yeah, you like that, no wouldn't you? Intimidation. Violence is never acceptable. Shut up. Threats and intimidation are not speech. You must stand against no, they're actions. Any form. Something that people should probably take. Second, I know so many of us are frustrated and disillusioned that the court has taken something away that's so fundamental. I know so many women are now going to face an incredibly difficult situation. I hear you. I support you. I stand with you. The consequences and the consensus of the American people. You know, that's what happens when you vote Democrat long enough. You lose your abortion rights. Liberty, dignity, and the stability of the rule of law demand that Roe should not have been overturned. With this decision, the conservative majority of the Supreme Court shows how extreme it is, how far removed they are from the majority of this country. It made the United States an outlier among the developed nations in the world. This decision must not be the final word. My administration will use all of its appropriate lawful powers. But Congress must act. And with your vote, you can act. You can have the final word. This is not. Thank you very much. More to say this in weeks to come. Thank you. Uh, is the Supreme Court broken? Is it broken? Is it broken? Oh, almost killed myself. <laughs> I love these comments though, he's useless. Yep, President Biden delivers remarks. So fucking, someone compared him to Jimmy Carter, that sounds, sounds about right. Not doing Jack Diddley shit. Yeah, Biden historically, like, voted against this shit, so... He probably likes it. Fucking sad joke.
hell is this? This is where I was standing when I found out I was pregnant. This is what my bank account looked like. And this is the show I was watching with my boyfriend while I was freaking out over how to tell him. I was about to start a new job. I was about to turn 27. And now I had to choose, have a baby or somehow find a way to be my own abortion doctor. We are the Americans just had their constitutional right to abortion ripped away. Now, millions of women live in states with little or no abortion access. In September, my home state of Texas got a head start on this. The life of every unborn child who has a heartbeat will be saved from the ravages of abortion. Yeah, and endure so the ravages I have of, uh, a preview of your life future. without any support. Self-managed abortion is legally risky and demands anonymity. But I wasn't about to let the government tell me what to do with my body. The first step to doing my own abortion was figuring out how far along I was. This was really important because I was racing multiple clocks. Yeah, this is what's gonna happen. We're gonna have a bunch of tutorial First, videos. The legal another, clock, which at the time in Texas yourself. was six weeks for abortion. Oh, what you want to know about is sexual intercourse. I always thought that conception. Hundreds of but in the eyes of science uh, and the law, pregnancy starts on the first day of your last period. So even though I'm pretty sure this is the night I got pregnant, my last period started on the first, which means I was already eight weeks pregnant. It was already too late to legally get an abortion in Texas, but the biological clock hadn't run out yet. I'd read that it's safe to use abortion pills up to 12 weeks, so I still had four weeks if I could just find them in time. And so I started Googling. I quickly found a clinic promoting free ultrasounds that seemed to offer abortions too, but it turned out to be a pro-life center that tried to convince me not to get an abortion. They led me to believe they would help me, wasting a week of my time and running down the clock. What a fucking piece of shit. I had three weeks left to figure this out. I wondered if an out-of-state clinic could help me. But they were all far enough away 20, that it would have uh, meant a fake twenty dollar bill that has a Bible passage on it. Actually, no, I'll say it's with the equivalent. I felt trapped. Another shitty thing to do. Entangled in a political battle, totally detached from my reality. But then I found information that showed me how to do this on my own. Using pills to have an abortion at home is not new. For years, women have been sharing notes about their experiences underground. These women confided anonymously about why they chose this route. The privacy of the order of abortion medication is incredible. So I didn't have to drive anywhere. I didn't have to go through the hospital. I just need to grab my gloves.
Really is just one, one sad joke. My husband's been sharing me stories uh, to go over at some point when I do these videos. I don't recall that I do have some art, some filmed art pieces I can use for commentary, so. I'll be using those in the future, but I just, I don't know, I've just been really itching to get this piece done for a while here. Sitting in my mind. I want to see it inked up and looking pretty. Huh. <clears throat> so we're going to start with the red itself here. Oh, let's see, where's my medium? I don't know what it's like to be raised by parents that don't that didn't want me. But I can imagine that's what's gonna, what's gonna happen to a lot of people in these states. Some are even suggesting like, yeah, well, <laughs> even if the, the father, you know, has a baby with someone, they should uh, be forced to commit. Someone posted a, a meme making the joke, well, making some argument no one ever made. Like, we're going to make it illegal for a woman to get an abortion, then we should make it illegal for the father to uh, run out. You know, something, no, something that's never been argued before. And the meme, the character responds with, uh, your terms are acceptable. As if to say, a good scenario is a child being born by a woman who didn't want him to a family that doesn't love each other. It's lunacy. Now they're now these people are even like more emboldened and feel like they can use that to go after my uh, marriage, to go after trans people more, and make it illegal to get them any kind of gender affirming care. Right now they're trying to make it so that you have to be like 18 or older. Some are trying to make it so you have to be like in your 20s.
like making these things a little thicker, so I'm probably going to pull out. that keep coming up is like, let's put it up for adoption, let's put it up for adoption, let's put it up for adoption. As if the foster care system is this wonderful place. When you get raised uh, by by uh, Pastor Molestia or some shit. But yeah, adoption agencies, which of course people are fighting to uh, make sure they don't allow gay people to adopt. Go figure that one out. They want more adoptions. But they don't want certain people to adopt them. Okay. They don't want the gays to adopt them. Well, that just seems a little counterproductive. Who came in here? Uh, hey, Blazy. Oh, yeah, I've yeah, I've seen people raised in orphanages that aged out. It's not an ideal life. I'll just say that. There's one woman shared a good experience too. She was taking care of orphans in an orphanage, and this child was born with a disease. I can't, I can't remember which one it was. Doesn't matter. The point is, is that he was already predetermined that he was going to probably only live up until seven or eight. He lived up until he was five. He was on his deathbed. He asked if he would be able to see his mommy in heaven. Would reply, yes. Doesn't matter if it was true or not. But in the end, she made a very poignant statement that this child should have been aborted. There's no reason for someone to be born on this earth to only live until they are five years old and die of a disease without any parents to take care of them, or any, any loved ones around them. That's the kind of the angle I'm kind of going for with the video I'm going to work on, is just looking for a lot of uh, different stories. Maybe not. Maybe I'll just go over the, uh, the countries that have abortion banned altogether. Countries like Iraq, the Congo, Madagascar, booming, bustling civilizations.
front and there. Get some of the details in this bastard. Of course, the, the whole thing is that, you know, these people don't care about protecting children, because they did, then they would have been advocating for some gun control. After all these mass shootings. Uh, especially after Uvalde in Texas. Especially after Sandy Hook. Especially after Virginia Tech. Especially after Columbine. Etc, etc. not consistent at all in their beliefs and their actions there's a little fun statistic 60% of the country supports abortion yet when it comes to a baby who might have Down syndrome 90% of those babies are aborted no figure Almost as if, uh, when it comes to raising a, a child and a person with Down Syndrome, they weigh in the quality of life over having a life altogether. It's so disgusting to me. They want to put women and doctors in prison over miscarriages and and possible abortions, or even and even finding them and bounty hunting them if they try to go get one. And yeah, they're going to use that as the basis to try to deny uh, my marriage and put it back to the state level again. You know. Most states, even when they do have that, that sort of uh, civil union or whatever, there's going to be more instances of those states even denying us. Uh, you know, not equal protections in any, in any respect. I won't get any of the benefits of being you know, mar married at the federal level either. Those will all just be taken away. No, no more tax incentive there. nice if we could start the discussion on poly marriages, but no, no, now I gotta waste fucking time on my one life talking to people and promoting the ideas that we should be able to keep our marriage rights. And why vote in blue no matter what doesn't make any fucking sense, we need another candidate, we need another party, we need something. We're just a violent, uh, I mean not a violent revolution, because we already, I can already see where that's going to go. Say your L's like W's. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I'm always wondering if I have ADHD. There's a lot of times where like I try to do something. Like I'll say I need to download the X picture, I need to download this picture. But then I get distracted by internet. Some notification or something. And next thing you know, it's like an hour has passed, and it's like, oh shit, I never downloaded that picture. Let me try it again. Oh shit, I ended up watching a bunch of videos instead. And reading articles. Alright, let me try again. You know, the cycle continues.
fucked. I don't get these people at all. I really don't. The officer that arrested Christor's mom got arrested for computer tampering. So they may have to release her soon. Oh damn, so that just puts the whole case up, uh, up for grabs, huh? Yeah. Camera's overheating. Let that cool off for a bit. Turn off this fan a little more. For a second, let's give us another coat, especially in certain areas. Right there,
Bowser of this. There we go. Cool. Didn't leave that too long. Let that sit open for a while. <clears throat> yeah. Hey, Green Fox. Yes, trying to summon the Hell Priest. Take us out of this life. What is your pleasure, sir? How's 
of going green fox. I just came down, just got through going and getting down with the sickness and all that. <coughs> Somewhat recovering still, but I'm, I'm, I'm healthy. Such sights to show you. Little 34 in the backyard, Mortali. of the fur in there. Yeah, I'm kind of excited for a Hellraiser TV series. That's in the works. It's been in the works for like years now. But speaking of sites too, um, Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared is actually starting their Adult Swim run finally. That's another series that just fell off the radar and people thought it was never coming back. But no, it's it's there. It's coming. I would hope the Hellraiser TV series kind of uh, well, I don't know. You could go in so many directions with it. You can go into like the lore of the Cenobites and where they came from. My problem has always been they keep going with this whole fucking heaven and hell angle, and that was not never the point of Hellraiser. We are explorers of experience. Demons to some, angels to others. They're not confined within whatever made-up deities people have, or, or lore, or whatever. What's up, Matt? Yeah. I mean, they could explore it that way. They could uh, make it an anthology series where it's mainly just like a bunch of short stories of people's encounters with the box and desires and forbidden pleasures and all that that weird stuff. Just make it as make it full of gore and tits and debauchery. I don't know. That seems like the Seems like entertainment me has kind of like come, gone away from that for the longest time. Seems more harder than ever to get a get a woman to take her top off and let alone show some dick on camera. Like I was stunned to see a, a, just a bunch of flaccid cocks on the boys in some scenes. Showing a penis in, in, on camera in any form is such a taboo. Even still, you can't show a penis erect, otherwise it's considered porn at that point. You might be able to show a flaccid penis here and there, but anything that's erect, you're, you're fucked. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, literally you're fucked, but... All the Hellraiser movies, like the, all of the past ones, involve like detectives finding serial killers and or doing investigations and shit like that. 
don't know, the movies have just been terrible. I never thought the fourth one was that bad, even though it kind of sours it by making Pinhead a... makes the Hell Priest an active bad guy, as opposed to just, you know, an immortal figure. Was there just to fulfill uh, a function of taking people in and giving them undescribable sights and horrors to, and experiences to, to have. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, that's another thing too, yeah, no, no badge on TV. And Kevin Smith did an interview where he's talking about this uh, movie he did. It wasn't Jersey Shore. It was something Jersey titled. And because there was like a scene where a woman has an orgasm, that guy gave it an R rating as opposed to just the PG-13. If, if you ever watched the movie, this film has yet not yet been rated. It's a great documentary about the review boards on movies and how it's basically just used as a tool to hinder independent movie projects Given studios, big studios preference, uh, a great example was the South Park Brothers when they did their movie Orgasmo, they got the NC-17 rating, but no description of what they needed to change. They're like, well, you can re-edit it, but likely it's not going to get accepted. So it's like, there's, they won't even tell them. But when they did uh, South Park Longer, Bigger, Longer, and Uncut, they got the NC-17 rating, and it's got a list of things they just needed to edit and change in order to bring down the rating. So, I mean, right there was a good indication of just how they favor major studios over independent projects when it comes to the ratings board. Uh, it's always required to have at least one Catholic child rapist on there, I mean priest. Granted, if he's just there to review movies, he's, he's not out there raping little boys, as far as we know. <clears throat> it's almost never consistent, like how many fucks you can have. How many... How many thrusts are in a sex scene, or... Anything, anything homosexual related automatically will bump up your rating to at least a PG-13. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, politics affects everything. Politics is everything. Blow your brain.
Yo, stop clock, rewind, the blaze of speed. Ain't none of you suckers gonna catch up to me. Don't y'all critique, I've got the moves like Kanye. My main man, my defeats go along with the money out before you wrote the check. I've done you three times before you give a consent. Speed, blast your brain, losing CPU. Get a motherfucking needle mask right into you. They say. Really, it should just go back to where it was before, where they had the X rating. X rating, all it meant was that this is a movie that only adults can comprehend and understand or enjoy, really. Uh, Midnight Cowboy was the only X rated film to win a Oscar. And that has no real sex scenes in it, at least explicit ones. But that's all it used to mean back in the day. It wasn't until the movie Deep Throat came out, which was a comedy that featured explicit sex scenes, that they, that I guess, government intervened and said that, uh, yeah, we, we can't have it this way anymore. Uh, movies that are just explicitly porn and have porn in it no longer be, can be advertised in certain ways, uh, in almost any way, really. So many, so many networks will never promote a movie like that. People call on the job to bring some versatility. Sonic so hard you turn to bestiality. Something this move should be criminal. Even though know, corporations do morally apprehensible shit every fucking minute of every day, they still try to keep up their uh, family friendly images. Congratulations, Beat Blizzy Blazy. I'm sure he does. Oh yeah, it's a, it's a racket. My hope is that as... Hopefully, maybe we'll see this, uh, this Disney Monopoly, like, just fall apart. I'd love to just see these, these big, huge companies just fucking fall apart and be forced to break up into a bunch of little companies instead. They start seeing an explosion in, in indie movie scenes again. fail in the online world because that's all this all in exists in there's a whole army of people ready to call everything woke to the point where it's a fucking like verbal tick they can't help but spew Like that Buzz Lightyear movie that came out that features uh, a, what, a woman giving uh, her girlfriend a peck on the, the lips. Something that you probably wouldn't even notice if you were, weren't paying attention or people didn't draw so much attention to it. Which only validates the reason to have it in there, I guess. Because people make such a big deal over it. They're like, oh, the movie's woke. The whole movie's woke. It's garbage. 
It's garbage now. Same with the whole Lord of the Rings bit. People getting fucking butt hurt over black elves and dwarves. Even if that, that Lord of the Rings show is shitty, you know, just, I don't know, when I hear all this rhetoric and shit, making, trying to spin everything into some kind of culture war, it makes me think, like, man, I hope this movie, I hope this show does successful. I, don't, I hope it's just not only good, but I hope it just succeeds in every way. Just to piss you off. Even, th even stuff I thought was, like, benign, there's, like, a whole little sphere of, of invalids just foaming at the mouth over something like the Sonic movie getting its remake with the redesign. They're like, ah, take that, feminist. Like, what? What are you talking about? Yeah, this is a... This is a stab at the social justice warriors. We got... They, they, the fans demanded Sonic's redesign, and it happened. This is a victory against the feminists and the leftists. What do you even say to that? It's like, I can't even come up with any kind of response to it. Might as well just say like, yeah, this, this is why my this is why my toilet flush flushes correctly now. Because the Sonic movie got redesigned. There's no no connection, no uh, no relation whatsoever. The recent He-Man show? Yeah, I actually like that. See, the thing is, is like, I saw the previews and I'm like, eh, that looks kind of, kind of neat. And I, I wasn't really thinking much of it. In fact, I wasn't even planning on watching it. But when I heard that He-Man like dies in it, I'm like, oh shit. You mean something interesting happens? Fuck, I'm getting on that shit. Because even when the, the 2000s remake came out, because I never watched T-Man as a kid, it was over by the time I was, like, sentient. But when the He-Man 2000s remake came out, I just remember being so fucking bored with it, because he was such a Mary Sue. He, he He's never, like, overpowered in any way. I don't know, if I rewatch the show a little more, maybe, but... I was trying to, I was going through the original too on stream at one point on Twitch because they're a little more friendly with that sort of thing. Yeah, and the show's just, I don't know, it's just dribble. It's just mindless entertainment for, for children back in the day. And you're so OP, yeah, what makes them. It's just like when Goku died in the first episode of Dragon Ball Z, or, you know, the first ten episodes. <laughs> it's like, holy shit. What, what the hell's gonna happen when, when there's no He-Man? Like, oh shit, the world's gonna fall, the world's falling apart and dying. And, you know, of course, once again, it got spun into some kind of culture war thing. It's like, you know what really would have pissed everybody off and, and put me on their side is if they replaced He-Man, right? They had, like, some new guy come up and say, yeah, here's your new young hip He-Man to replace the old He-Man. 
Look at that. He's got a. He's got a hat. He's got a. I don't know. A Fortnite dance. In a hoodie. Like they tried to do with Spider Man back in the 90s when they gave him. Uh, when they replaced him with some guy who had a sleeveless hoodie and a new redesign or whatever. Yeah, that would have. Uh, that would have been especially disastrous. But no, they made the whole. I think if they released it weekly too, that probably would have helped. Instead of all at once in, in parts. Because no longer no longer is He Man constrained in an area where like he can't use his sword on anyone. Like he wasn't allowed to hit anyone with his sword back in the eighties. Even even without me watching the show, I got all the fucking little Easter eggs and remarks Skeletor and everyone was making in that in that scene too, where they fought the first time. Where Skeletor is like, "He man, you finally used that sword the way it was meant to be used." I also think they need to stop using Mark Hamill's Joker voice for everything. I like Mark Hamill and shit, but goddamn, man, come on. He's got more of capability than just doing the Joker. And being able to imitate the original voice of Chucky in that movie it was, it tells me he has some range. It's not being utilized. <laughs> yeah, I'll say Tila was kind of like a selfish bitch at first in the beginning there. one of the bigger problems is that the pacing problems it's like she's just like ah you lied to me I hate everything and then one episode later it's like ah just let the whole world die takeaway too is that Adam's father was always like looking down on him probably making comments to his uh, lack of ability at least there was a hint of that in the beginning of the show before he found out and that was a nice uh, touching moment too where Adam reunites with his father and they kind of reconcile things Take that off. And then, then weirdly enough, Netflix has another He-Man show on there that's 3D animated. I don't know, I couldn't watch five minutes of it. I'm like, okay, we're just going back to the, the whole trope of Power Rangers and uh, one note bad guys and we're just going to solve everything within uh, a few episodes. Alright. <laughs> right. one thing I can agree on. They probably shouldn't have, they could have just as easily have Tila going on like a, I don't know, a quest of trying to keep the world together. 
But then again, that kind of goes into the territory of her replacing He-Man. So, that, that makes one problem right there, too. Probably needed a, there probably needed at least to be a scene where she gets chastised for her, uh, misplaced grudges. Maybe one way to go with it, rather than, uh... But I think if, she, if it turned into, like, her just, like, taking up the arms and being like, yeah, well, we'll keep, we'll, we'll have to make do without him. That would be an indication of, like, oh, shit. They're gonna have Teela replace He-Man? He I thought this was He-Man. I know, I'm gonna be in the forever minority in this category. <laughs> this is like when I bring up I like the Speed Racer movie. And people are like, it did the show injustice! I'm like, have you seen Speed Racer? We were just watching it a year ago before this movie came out. The show's absurd. Are you crazy? <laughs> So's the movie. And they clearly, the Wachowski sisters clearly cared about the source material. They even made references to the fact that Speed's dad used to be a, a former wrestler. They did all the ridiculous things that are usually featured in the show, too, like having a fucking gangster's office in the back of a semi-truck. <laughs> right? Like, oh shit, you know what? That, that would be a good montage to pull up right now. First episode, guy a guy has a, a plan for the engine written on a windshield, and this other guy competitor, I guess, is sneaking in. Pop speaking. Hi, Pop. Is it okay if we pull out your windshield spot for a little walk? Turn this off. Why does he want it? Where is Pete? Huh? Take that sword now. You should tell that to your mobile. I shouldn't have told Pop that. Take off my windshield, huh? I wonder what Pops is so sore about. <laughs> I've drawn the designs in invisible ink on that windshield, and now if the glass is broken, those plans will be gone forever. <laughs> ah! Ah! Clever of you to hide those designs on that windshield. It makes my job easier. To get them, all I have to do is take his car. You'd better not. <laughs> <laughs> Did you walk through the door and just jump out the window? <laughs> I'm going to win this race, Pete, and those 5,000 bucks will be mine. You better not count on them, Tuggery. Oh, God. Classic.
Never gonna win me on the He-Man show, though. Actually, I, I like to like how that turned out. Of course, then again, maybe I'm just a contrarian where I just see, like, a mob going down on something. I'm like, hmm, I better check that out. Is it really that bad, Dale? I just, I, I just instinctively question anything the majority agrees on, I guess. You know what? Since we're on it, I'm just. Um, ugh, I can't. I don't know if I can do it. I don't know if I can do it. Actually, you know, the one thing I've been meaning to do. Speaking of culture wars and all this shit, see what one of these uh, these chuds are up to. Uh, let's see. Let's see what one I used to watch. Let's see what he's doing. Yeah, this guy used to do reviews. Then he started spewing the whole fucking, like, racist dog whistle shit again. Uh, let's see. I can't, uh. I gave the show its fair shot. Yeah, well, I mean, I can't, I can't make someone like it, so. <laughs> Oh, Mad God's out. Yeah, I need to watch that. Alright, this is the movie I want to see. I want to see Lightyear. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So, Lightyear released. And why does it, why does, what's this people wanting Tim Allen to do the fucking voice? Tim Allen sucks. He's not a good actor. Give me a fucking break. It is absolutely bombed. Not only did they recast Buzz Lightyear as someone completely brand new, Chris Evans, uh, it also had this sort of controversial same-sex kiss. Now, that kiss obviously got it banned in certain parts of the world, but not only that, it also contributed to it absolutely bombing in the did Western it? world as well. Did it? And why is this? Because did it really? This is what I'm talking about terminally online people. No one gives a shit about this outside of, like, the fucking Twitter sphere or Reddit posts or 4chan. Did, did, uh, did, did Disney go out of its way to, like, advertise that, like, as one of the selling points? Like, when you see, like, the movie promotions and the commercials and everything, right? Like, see Buzz Lightyear this weekend on Friday. And you'll get to witness a same-sex kiss. Like, was that one of the commercials? Give me a fucking break. When the new Top Gun came out, was one of the advertising selling points was like, come see new, the, two, the new Top Gun, a completely apolitical movie that has no propaganda or support of you know, one country over another at all. It's completely apolitical. No gay people in it, says Russ Siskel and Ebert. <laughs> or Ebert or Roper, I don't fucking care. Oh, Ebert's dead too, that's right. Because a lot of people have been writing loads of articles about this going, why is it a failure? Why is it this? Why is it that? I mean, this this movie has... It's a failure because it's not... Well, it's not even a failure. It just didn't make as much money as another movie that came out that weekend that has 80s nostalgia behind it. It also doesn't help that people are just waiting for movies to come on streaming now, especially uh, a movie generally that's going to be drawn by families with kids. They're just going to be like, well, just wait for it to come out on Disney+. Plus. You got plenty of shit to watch on there. I'm paying... Yeah, fifteen dollars a month for that Disney Plus. I'm not gonna spend an extra thirty dollars to go out and take you out to the movie. All right, you just wait. It's that simple. It's not some fucking culture war bullshit where people are just massively rejecting something based because based on something uh, 
completely petty. Because there's too many black people in it, or is there a gay person in it? No one, no one fucking really gives a shit. But of course, if there's a black, if there's a gay person in it, then it's all of a sudden it's political, you know. As I say, you know, there's only two gen uh, people only see two genders, male or political. <clears throat> Continue, Mr. H. Really bombed. It's done terrible, uh, especially based on what they were supposed to project, which we'll take a look at some articles in a moment to sort of, you know, remind ourselves of these things. But why? Like, why would this be an issue? People have had enough. People don't want to watch this stuff. They don't want to go and take their kids to this stuff. You know, people are voting with their wallets. And that's the same thing that people always say. You know, we do live in... You know, a, a society where we don't are obligated to spend our money on these kind of things, <laughs> and this is one in a long line of situations which I think is causing the general population to sort of open their eyes and really actually see what is going on here. Which it was never a secret. The likes of Disney have outwardly stated, "Yeah, no, we're going to be pushing this agenda." They have even used words to that effect. And people have just had enough. People don't have to watch these things. They're choosing not to watch these things. And it's fascinating watching it on a daily slash weekly basis. Disney's stock prices, they are going down quite a lot. It's not, it's not good. I mean, well, it's not good for Disney. It's fine for anyone else. Who cares? And these are the things, you know, you, you then have interviews with the likes of Chris Evans uh, going, Disney. oh, it's a shame, it's this, it's that, and blah, 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 blah. And the hypocrisy is massively on display here because we talk about inclusion and representation and all these kinds of things. How did the new Doctor Strange in the movie UK? Do, by the way, there's Mr. the sort H. of you know the, the coined phrase Islamo leftist. In the UK, these kind of things are at odds with one another. You know, Islam and leftism they are absolutely at odds with one another. And these are the places, the countries, the territories at which this movie has now been banned. Not only that, I'm sure it'll be banned in China as well as a result of that. But it's always funny watching these people that initially subscribe to this sort of leftist ideal then coming up to well, he's all, he's okay with another that. culture that doesn't accept it. It's very comical, uh, if you ask me. Now, anyway, let's dive into this, ladies and gents, because, again, it is, uh, it's just one in a long line of, well, comedy, basically. Now, um, we have the Rotten Tomatoes score here, which we'll get to in a moment, because I think it's really important, actually, to take a look at how much it has actually done, right? So Lightyear itself, uh, the Chris Evans star uh, was projected yeah, this shit's open. Fuck off. Let's see, let's hear another one. Some people suggested this guy. Not him. Was it Nerdotic? Nerdotic? Yeah. We want Kenobi's awful, female Thor, love and thunder, more cringe. There was already a female Thor. Anyone can take up the hammer. Well, as long as they follow the code, I guess. Man, if the uh, Avengers came out, the first movie, if that Avengers movie came out like five years later than it did, we'd be hearing a bunch of shit over a black Nick Fury. Because even long before that movie came out, they had Nick Fury as portrayed as a black man in the comics. In the um, Avengers Ultimate. I didn't hear a fucking peep. Everything's about this shit. Oh yeah, the Batwoman. Like, Batwoman looks fucking awful. <laughs> But in these guys' in mind, it's awful because there's there's an agenda behind it. It's a leftist agenda. Uh, 
Joker's 44% Rotten Tomato score. I don't think that has Rotten 44. It was higher than that. Guy's full of shit, isn't he? Yeah, 68. R r rated fresh from 592 critic reviews. Give me a fucking break. How does, how does the Kenobi flop exactly? It's a streaming show. Unless there's like a mass unsubscriber count, you can't really tell. I mean, it might flop in reviews, I guess you could say that. I have mean, no interest in seeing it, really. And I'm pretty sure none of his videos are going to be interesting. Uh, let's see. Anything uh, more from... Can I get a countdown? Why are you still using the, these same characters in your thumbnails? Alright, this one sounds interesting. This is what I've been working on. Hello. I am Baymax. Transgender robot. You might say I'm non-binary. That was a robot joke. Yeah, I got it. It just wasn't that funny. Scanning all known genders. Match found. You are a boy. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Have you ever given any yeah, thought? Like well, it. that's creepy. But uh, who doesn't like a lolly? Yeah, I'm really organic insertion. Blocker. This puberty blocker is called bacitracin. Ah, bummer. I'm allergic. If you let me apply it, I'll give you a lollipop. Well, that's creepy. But uh, who doesn't like a lollipop, am I right? What a good little girl. There's your lollipop. Nice. Would you like to accompany me to a drag show? Um, yeah, I'm good right now. He is gonna help a lot of people. It's a Z, not he. Oh, f*** off. Another day, another Disney totally organic insertion of the personal politics of their employees. Now, I think that we have to understand, be understanding that there is levels to this. And that we can't overreact just by the existence of certain characters or tropes or things of that you're one to talk man i've seen your fucking clips <laughs> this started when the idea of like cersei or siri from witcher was going to be possibly played by a black person and that's when it started getting me thinking like why does it fucking matter? In a movie, I'm you have curious. to look at the whole picture. And when you look at the whole picture, you see that it was and is entirely a part of some, as they call it, agenda. You can see this article as they back from March, on huh? March 30th, um, by Christopher F. Rufo. <clears throat> Last year, a report on Disney's... Uh, CRT-based diversity program. Which yeah, like, not my agenda is to America. eventually tell and share stories based on, like, my own personal experiences and thoughts and ideas. I mean, something that maybe some people can relate to, regardless of who they are. Yeah, that's kind of, like, my agenda. But if my character is bisexual, then all of a sudden it's uh, some kind of <laughs> ideological push that must be rejected and it's not natural and like these people have no idea if it's an executive decision to have certain people in their works and most writers and artists and creatives are usually not very conforming to their gender most of the time or 
they just have more life experiences, and no wonder why, like, a lot of this shit's progressive and insightful or empathetic to certain people. TV, TV and movies have always had a fucking progressive slant. These people are acting like it's something new. I've been watching Star Trek, Deep Space Nine, and Next Generation. Uh, even like old sitcoms. They have characters and episodes all the time dealing with like race and homosexuality and everything. It's not anything fucking new. So what we got here? What do we have going on here? America was founded on systemic racism, separated minorities into racially segregated affinity groups, and encouraged white employees to complete a, quote, white privilege checklist. This is something I covered at the time, too. Now I have obtained exclusive video from inside Disney that outlines its campaign to embed left-wing uh, bedroom politics into their children's programming and entertainment facilities. In wake of the Florida's parental rights and education and legislation, or legislation, which prevents public schools from promoting gender ideology in kindergarten through third grade, or what critics call the Don't Say Gay Bill, uh, Disney executives organized is. an all-hands meeting called the Reimag... Oh, they actually say it. Hold on. Reimagine. Tomorrow conversation series and pledged to mobilize the entire corporation in service of the LGBTQIA plus community. We can see that's going great, as their stock is now half of what it was a year ago. And Lightyear, which what should have been a easy seven hundred million dollar, eight hundred million dollar movie for Disney, didn't it didn't even break even. Okay, now yes, was it because just the, stuff was in like there. the girl on the sweet girl on girl action in Lightyear that made it flop? No, I think you would be. I think it would be extraordinarily disingenuous to say it was just that one. <laughs> Tell that to Mr. H. What it is... Who just watched earlier. Or has been. A couple of things. You know, not having Tim Allen voice him, I think... Again, no one gave a shit. I know that he was the voice of the doll, not the actual Buzz Lightyear. I didn't even think about that when I saw him. the trailer. Um, I think that the last year or so of, you know, embattled Disney um, with, you know, is essentially positioning themselves as a company against half of their customers... Uh, has boiled over um, the economy. You know, people are paying a lot more money for gas, and parents with you know two and a half kids um, don't have the. And it's not cheap to go to the movies unless you plan strategically. How does that work? Having half a kid. I go to the movies with my wife. It's fifty bucks. Like, yes, I know I don't have to buy popcorn and a slushy, but I do. So to take my fam, my, just you know, take a family to the movies, you could spend a hundred, and that's only four tickets. And like a thing of popcorn and some drinks, you know what I mean. So it's super expensive, and with gas prices being where they are and inflation where they are, I'm sure that that has something. You know, families plays into it. But you could also point to Top Gun Maverick, which made over a billion dollars just fine in the very same weekend. Um, so again, this training feature a presentation in a meeting where executive producer Latoya Ravenu laid out Disney's ideological in ideology in blunt terms. She said. Her team was implementing a, quote, not at all secret gay agenda and regularly adding queerness to children's programming. Another speaker, production coordinator and? Alan March, said his team had created a, quote, tracker to ensure that they are creating enough canonical, canonical trans characters, uh, canonical uh, bi characters and all sorts of other stuff like that. Corporate president oh no, Gary diversity. Burr, so that she supported having many, many, many LGBTQIA characters in her story and reaffirmed the company's pledge to make at least 50% of its on screen characters minorities. That's not exactly how it works. Like, if, you're, if you represent 20% of the population, an accurate representation of that would be 20% of the on screen population. But what doesn't matter? You know, the, the breakdowns of movies. Uh, you know, can often depend on where the time they're set, where they're set, all sorts of stuff like that. That isn't this. Um, like when I read this, I really don't a lot give of people a shit like. Much. <laughs> but for some reason, for people like him, it's just like fucking all over the place.
like, wow, you know, people who might be queer want to write some queer characters. Country's a little more accepting of queer people. There might be more queer people in media. Go figure. Where's all the where was all the woke pe uh, people calling Star Trek woke when uh, Kirk gave that kiss to a black woman? Like I think of the idea of like these uh, of a corpo having like diversity guides and uh, classes or whatever is pretty fucking cringe. Because you know, we all know it's very disingenuous to begin with. Because they, they can just change on a whim depending on what what, what way the wind is blowing. So there's that. Like it doesn't matter what corporations do anything or say anything. Jordan Peele who are out there saying like I only hire black actors because you know I want to support my race um, yeah theaters are dying COVID plus outrageous tickets and snack prices are pushing people away <laughs> yeah I'm on season 5 of uh, Deep Space Nine right now <clears throat> I'm just at the part where it was right after uh, Kal Dutkat declares his allegiance to the Dominion. I did like the episode where they did a crossover with uh, the Doctor from Voyager. And the Doctor and, and Deep Space Nine turning out to be uh, augmented human. That was a pretty touching episode. Let's see here. <clears throat> okay, this is done. It's okay when they're black because you know I want to support my race. Um, it's okay when they're black, but if you if a white person had said that, it would be insane, right? Um, but it's because if you look back in history, Mister Cordering, if uh, <laughs> black people were exactly put front and center for hiring positions, it was only the '60s when the Civil Rights Act happened, and then it just end hiring discrimination practices and already and by then Hollywood was just established as, as a juggernaut like okay
people still have their biases. So yeah, no, no fucking wonder you got guys who are just uh, who focus on hiring black actors. Who gives a shit? We have uh, we have the people that came before us to thank for this little situation that we have this imbalance, pretty much. Not, you know, this is more of a pushback against you, you pissed off a lot of families and those are a lot of families that spent a lot of money at Disney and a lot of these like no one's that hyper left. focused on Disney's antics, especially families who are taking care of their kids. Just people, elitists, coastal elites. They're not living paycheck to paycheck. They they don't understand what it's like when you know a family and you're just trying to do right by your kids, and you don't have time to do all the research. Here's a perfect example. You know, the, the obviously the Lightyear thing was a great example. It was like a passing scene in the movie. It wasn't like the whole story it wasn't really that big of a deal. But the fact that it becomes you know it's on Fox News, it's on CNN, it's on all this stuff. That's what people are talking about instead of. Hey, Lightyear is, uh, you know, an uneven movie, but it's pretty good. You know, there are plenty of people... Well, that, that's a good question. Why are they talking about it? Why does it matter to them so fucking much? By, the, by having it on Fox and everything come up, it just only justifies its existence, really. Like, hey, there's a lot of people that still are uh, up in arms over this shit. It's how you get how you get the idea of people being more accepting. This is being exposed to it. It's called contact theory. Or more like exposure in this case. Exposure theory, I don't know. Being exposed to something as opposed to it makes it less alien of a concept. How many people go go growing up like not understanding a word, not having a word for their feelings, just thinking they're a fucking defective. Cooled off now, GoPro. There we go. All right. Remember when theaters just reopened and Fast Nine, the Fast and Furious, it made like seven hundred million or eight hundred million, like the first week the theaters reopened. People will still go see a movie that is just flat out entertaining, you know. I don't know if this is a. I don't know if this would play out, but I would not be surprised if the Minions movie coming out this weekend does better than Lightyear. Now if it doesn't challenge any of your world views. Just again, flat under exclusive. I've obtained leaked video from Disney's upcoming new Baymax, which promotes the trans flag and the idea that men can have periods uh, to kids as young as two. It's all part of Disney's plan to, quote, re-engineer the discourse. What do you mean, two? Now, I don't know if I can actually play this clip. You're not really understanding uh, maybe shit. Maybe I can show you some old. screenshots because I've seen it. So you've got the character here in, like, the feminine product dial. And, and? I don't know the gender of this robot. It's what it's supposed to be. It sounds male. Um, but I think what they're referring to is, so this thing is trying to buy feminine products, and he's asking this woman... Hey, what do you recommend? I don't know why the robot's buying tampons, but it is. Um, something that I don't think I would prioritize putting in my, you know, children's content, you know. It's one of those uh, things where I just like, who cares? Like, those things I'm exist. Not, I don't work at <laughs> Pixar. I would just, you know, I'd probably be solely concerned with entertaining as opposed to, uh, you know... Uh, you know, making sure I check every box and, and you know, make sure my, my personal gender ideology is reflected in every little thing I do. Uh -huh. um, but then, so he asks, she's like, what? Uh, why is this bubble thing asking me about uh, tampons? So then she goes on to refer a particular brand or blend or whatever. Um, and the scene that they're referring to 
is what is clearly a biological man wearing a, a trans shirt who's also buying tampons. Or I don't know what it is. I don't really care. A feminine product. Okay. I wonder if I'm going to get ads for like... <laughs> That'll be funny. Anyway. So this is what they're talking about. So you have four women who are, all these women are, you know, trying to be helpful or whatever. And then you've got a, what is clearly a, a male, a biological male who, you know, they've got to make sure they have the trans flag on. Otherwise you wouldn't know. You wouldn't know to respect their pronouns. Also buying it. You know, some of the comments you see, Nicole Russell, I have four. I'm pretty sure it doesn't even have any speaking lines either. Who would watch this and who would watch this and make them feel uncomfortable? What is the purpose? I would think that is the purpose. Um, no, I think if it makes you, you know, feel uncomfortable, do you I think look in the that the, this character's existence why. in the movie is a big deal? No, I don't. But this is what is oh, purpose. Man, this is what has pulled it off lately since the last time I saw him. Like, politics are. Well, I'm not. You know, I'm not a, a parent raising kids. You know, I'm not as protective with the content that I consume because I'm choosing to consume everything I consume. But you know, this is what that kind of stuff looks like. You see on the Daily Wire, leaked video from new Disney oh, show Daily features. Daily Wire, uh, yes, the apolitical Daily Wire, no bias there. Like, I Piero. don't know if it's supposed to be funny, like if it's supposed to be a meme, and that, I don't know the context before the scene or after. Is a robot shopping for a female in the family? I don't know. Um, there might be a totally like story-driven reason why this robot is doing what it's doing. Um, you know. You see, uh, you know, I prefer pads, another woman injected. They're more comfortable for me. Thank you, Baymax said again. I always get the ones with wings, another person said, whose shirt was a trans flag, chimed in as well. As the crowd around Baymax continues to grow, another woman adds, get unscented and bleach free if you can. Yo, my daughter loves these. A man reaches over Baymax's shoulder to show him the package. Weird. Um, hey, single dad, maybe, whatever, I don't know. Whatever, I guess. I don't know if I would say, my daughter loves these. That's a little weird. These might be easier if it's her first time. Yet another woman held out the video. Um, you know, <laughs> this is what they're talking about when they talk about an agenda. Do I personally have a problem with it? No, I don't. I'm not going to consume this content. But the content is clearly targeted towards a specific group of people. And including this scene or the, the actors in this scene... It's clearly politically driven, and it's clearly uh, not working out. Yeah, the general populace is what it's targeted at. Whatever. I guess media and entertainment, whenever it's socially aware about anything else than what your current worldview is, is bad. All right. I got to eat dinner. I got to go. Good night. Good luck. Can we all just be human already? Yeah. No, it's too far. It's going too far. And it's especially irritating when people suggest the idea of just going backwards. But yeah, eventually you just need to get to that point where it's just fucking, it's not a big deal. No one gives a shit. I forgot what city it was, but like a transgender person made it to like, uh, as an official, elected official. And her being transgender did not come up at all in the campaign. At all. And neither as a negative or a positive or anything. And that's generally what the goal is, right? To not make an issue out of a non-issue. Alright, have a good night.